What is going on? Welcome to Bruce Room, where we get into the nitty gritty of who the artists and creatives are in the Aussie scene. I am Bruce, aka the Culture Black Kid, and today we have Natasha Bianca. She is an Italian Australian pop RB singer songwriter, posted up in Adelaide, who has continually been on the up and up. You might have seen her as the Triple J uh, Unearth Awardee as a spot at Listen Out this year, and if not, at least all over your socials through the promo <laughs> from her most recent single, Bounce. Natasha, how are you doing? Like, for real, for real, how are you doing? Hello, I am doing amazing. What an intro. Thanks, bro. That's all right. That's, That's all right. a you great know. intro. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, I got I to gotta come correct. I got to come correct. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, you know, still still hustling out in the streets, you know, Ooh, keeping yeah. the keeping the the scene in check with, you know, Ooh, yeah. whatever. Oh yeah. Um, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh how has your 2023 been? Cliche question alert. Um, yeah, how's your 2023 been? <sighs> It's been a roller coaster, man. It's mm. been an absolute roller coaster. It's just, it's just crazy. You never kind of prepare yourself for the year that's coming ahead. Mm. Like as much as you like manifest and like, you know, you always like you start the year in a hype and like, we're gonna do all of this and like it's it's been a it's been a wild year and one that like I'm truly, truly thankful for. I've gotten on some like awesome opportunities. Um I feel I feel like I've just grown so much this year, but it hasn't always been, you know, flowers and rainbows. We've definitely had our fair share of, you know, lows, but that's life. And you also feel like you don't, um, but you need to experience the lows to appreciate the highs. So Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I can I can relate to that a little bit. You know, my, I think I've had a, a really, really, really great 2023, but you yeah. know, there's, there's been some some definitely low low moments. But like you said, that's life. That's yeah. life. You yeah. Know, you just yeah, it's, roll with the punches and yeah. I think this is the first year like completely out of like restrictions because I think even like 2022, early 2022, we had some sort of restrictions and still mm. QR codes and stuff. I feel like this is the first year people were like touring. Yeah. And, doing shows and like yeah. we're finally getting international acts coming in which is like why since we haven't had anything for like three years so mm -hmm. yeah it's been a it's been a yeah it's been wild it's been a it great has. year it has it feels like we're we're properly outside like <laughs> yes like proper outside yeah, 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 <laughs> we outside all right yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um well in this show, we kind of get into, like I said, in the, in the um, opening tag, you know, it's it's not the, the re a regular interview where I'm like, so tell me about your latest release. You know, we try and get a little bit deeper, you know, get allow yeah. the people to get to know you as a person a little bit yeah. more. And um, I'm still working on this, but I, I'm not able to travel interstate. I'm in Sydney currently. And like I said, you're in Adelaide. Um, mm -hmm. Technically, you are my first uh, interstate guest. Um, <gasps> yes yo uh, that's insane thank yeah. you <laughs> um that's all right that's all right um and when i finally have the the chance you know maybe i'll travel to adelaide we can redo it then but um yeah. one of the things i like to do is if i'm in person with someone is for them to choose a location that uh means a lot to them to shoot the interview there so seeing as i'm mm -hmm. i can't do that um i guess my first in pre-question um is where would you have chosen if if i was in adelaide and was able to we were able to do the i i have some mates that are in like some really cool studios mm. and i think the studio just always feels home um i probably would have picked there um yeah otherwise like come chill at our house and we can chat on the couch or something <laughs> not in a weird way or anything no, but like not. just but like i probably would pick the stew nice yeah. nice 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 is there any uh like I know there's so many, probably so many memories, but is there a particular memory that like stands out that's like, yeah, okay, that that solidifies the spot? It's weird because as much as um like I live in Adelaide, but like I do all my recording in Sydney. Oh, so wow, I don't okay. actually I don't do I don't do any of my work out of yeah, pretty much Adelaide. Um I've like been in studios mm -hmm. like here for like some other smaller things mm -hmm. and like like rehearsal rooms and and such. Um, but pretty much all of all of my recording has been in sydney so but uh, there would be like a few studios I, I i do have like i love and they're just like and also they're friends of mine so i like to support their business so if, if i have like writing sessions or rehearsal spaces i'll go and pick their studios and support them and pull money back into adelaide yeah definitely 
Definitely. Okay. That's, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Which studio out in Sydney do you, do you record at? I'm just curious. So I, yeah, I work with um, incredible producers. They're my besties, um, Danny Duke and Chunky Love. Ah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know, yeah. I know. I haven't met Danny, but I met Chunky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're just insane. I absolutely love them. <laughs> and my co-writer, Erin. So my co-writer, um, she was from Adelaide and then she moved to Sydney and that's how, like, we all kind of caught up all throughout uh, 21 and 2022, where we've made pretty much majority of, of my songs. Um, but then she's also done her own travel. She was living in like UK for a minute. She's now moving to, she's now living in Melbourne. Like she's mm. doing all of her traveling as well. But yeah, we all like kind of come together when, when we're in Sydney. Yeah. No, don't. Well, shout yeah. out to the crew. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the crew. Can't yeah, do it for without sure. you. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right. Uh, let's get let's get into the, um, my first proper intro question to you, mm-hmm. which is: What percentage of yourself do you think your circle really knows about you? Seeing as we're speaking about the crew, talking about like my crew within like like my like within the guys for, like, like music, your, like your inner circle. No, 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 no. Oh, like my inner circle. Inner okay. Circle. Yeah, yeah. Look, my my inner circle is my family, mm. so they have to know. They have to know me. Yeah. But as a matter of like, you know, I may be going through some shit that I don't feel like sharing. Yeah. So I feel like may I'm gonna say maybe like seventy to eighty okay. percent. Like okay. I do keep myself quite guarded as mm-hmm. well. But okay. they know me like as like as like my character and whatnot. So yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and seeing as you, you know, you kind of brought up a character, um, and you know, it seems like you do have that separation between Natasha, the person, and Natasha, the artist. Um, yeah, yeah. How much of that percentage do you think you have shared in your music so far? Oh, that's a great one. Um, as Natasha Bianca. So it's very odd. So when I was first tapping into songwriting, mm-hmm. I, I majority majority of my songs are all about like my own experiences. Um, but then kind of recently, also, I feel like I've jumped on this like bad bitch wagon and I love being on that wagon. Yeah. Um, and also because I feel like I, because I've gone through shit, I don't like to talk about that. I'm kind of semi blocking off this other half of myself, mm-hmm. which I'm not expressing in my music, but the songs that I am writing at the moment about like self empowerment and, you know, you know, you, you know, fun stuff. Yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of yeah. like that. Kind of helps me get over my shit as well. Just remind myself, like, yeah, you are a bad bitch. Yeah, type thing. So kind of just like that, and that's also got to be. Um, that's where I kind of separate, like Natasha and Natasha Bianca. Mm. So like she's she's like that alter ego. She's that baddie, whatever. But like the yep. shit that I have been through in my life, I might write about it one day. But like I don't. I don't know there's some things that it's just like I don't like to go back into like negative. And like depressing okay. moments. Okay. Not, I'm, I'm sounding like I'm making it sound like I've gone through something traumatic, which I like haven't. But you know, just like just just like general things. I rather okay. write about positive things and like, yeah. I just there's so yeah. It's my songwriting. Like as much as it, it as it's a reflection on, on myself and my character, mm-hmm. there are some sec like some parts of myself where I probably would like haven't been so open about. So. Yeah. But that might that might be to come. That might be something that's yeah to come in the future. And I might break down and write a whole side album. Who knows? <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> you um, never know. No, for sure, for sure. All right. Well, uh, we're about to get into the the main section of uh this show. Um, we're gonna take it back to primary school days. Got a little show and tell that we're, we're about to do. Um, Natasha's hopefully brought some items to go with some questions that I've sent, and if not, at least some dope stories to go along with it. So to kick it off, uh, number one. What is something that represents who you are as a person? Okay. I've got two. Actually, I've got a few for like most of my questions, but this it. one's hilarious. I have to start off with, this is sauce. That's I'm sauce. Italian. It's okay. sauce. I'm Italian. Yeah. So I wouldn't be where I am without like my heritage and my background, mm-hmm. <laughs> my family, obviously. And that's like a tradition we do. We make sauce. We make... Mm wine we make sausage like it's just part of family tradition of so that's just a little something on an insight to myself because what's I'm the and what's the pasta is life prime sauce like the best sauce like because i know italian obviously you know uh, italians are famous for their sauces but what's like the, the creme <laughs> de la creme of the sauce we just we just we just do the one recipe 
Oh, so it's just you like just your standard consistent. red. So yeah, okay. it's, it's it's just like batches, and like we will make like hundreds and hundreds of these. Oof. So and then it, yeah, so it's like one a one big processing day, yep. and we just like bottle heaps of heaps of um sauces, and then that keeps us for like the entire year. Fair enough. Yeah, Fair enough. yeah. So that's <laughs> number one. And then another little insight to myself. So it's funny because I made this at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. It's just a little mood board I've done. Fire. Love it. So it's just to like, this is like my motivation. It's my goal. It's like, it's just the dream. It's a vision. It's just how that represents me mm -hmm. is like, I'm, I'm just always a hardworking person. I'm always on my grind. I'm always on my hustle. And like, that is just like a representation of like where we're going. And Yeah. Nice, nice. What's um one thing on that board that you've ticked off that you're like, yes, I'm super proud of myself for doing that. And what's one thing that, you know, I mean, it's November when we're recording this. Mm. That maybe you haven't ticked off yet, but you're like, okay, that's all right. You know, maybe I could hit next year or maybe I still got a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So the one that I'm super proud of is my festival slots. Mm. And that was one thing on there that was like, I, I'm dying to get on the big stage. Yeah. So that was like one thing is like a huge tick. Definitely. Um. Yeah, I I've got recording on there. We've we've done heaps of recording, um, and then I have all other <laughs> I have all other things. One thing that I haven't done, well, oh, I don't know if I'm going to say that because that That's might right. be too that might be too calm. Um, I move moving moving out of state. Right. That's 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 a big goal for me, and and hopefully I can move more like close into the industry and stuff. Definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, you know, always love love a good mood board, you know, it keeps things in perspective. And it's also it's also good to have that physical representation that you can keep looking at. Um, I love yeah, sticky notes myself. So yes. yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I've never done like a mood board before. And, and at the start of the year, I was like feeling a bit gross. And I was like, I'm gonna do myself a mood board. Yeah. And then yeah, it's just wild, like, yeah, you, you come across things that you haven't haven't, but it's it's fine. We can just change yeah. the twenty three to twenty four and keep the same mood board. <laughs> no, so. for sure. For yeah. sure, yeah. it is, yeah, it is yeah. one of those things that you look at and you're like, ah, is that this? that seems like like some some goofy shit. And then you actually do it oh, and you're shit. like, yo, oh, shit. this has helped yeah. so much. <laughs> it also like helps you backtrack to like how I was feeling in that moment when I was yeah. like doing it as well. And it's like, damn, like you have come like mm. such a long way in like a couple of months. So yeah, sure. it's, it's a good it's a good nice little reminder as well. Definitely, definitely. All right, yeah. um, number two. What's the last sentimental gift that you received from someone? Again, I've got two. I probably have two for like all of no, these. I love it. So <laughs> I'd rather come prepared no, than I'm sure. underprepared. <laughs> so this isn't really, um, yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift, but I also just, okay, I've got a little, lot of t-shirts in my presentation. So like, bear with me. This one is, it's an I'm at Ellen. Oh, yeah. I managed to get into the Ellen show back mm -hmm. in 20, 2018. Um, and yeah, it was, it was wild. And this means so much to me because we, we travel, I was with my family and mm -hmm. we travel with another couple of ours. Uh, so family friends of ours who yep. are a couple and mm -hmm. she unfortunately passed away due to cancer mm -hmm. and the Ellen show was her biggest highlight of the trip. Wow, so okay. these like means just like a whole other big, meaning for, sure. for us it was wild that we got to go to the ellen show because it was completely um unplanned um we met some people out to dinner who worked on the ellen show and then mm. they got us tickets for the show the next day oh, that's so that was like yeah it was it was wild and that was like her highlight and also when we we're in new york we went and saw school of rock festival uh oh, sorry dope. musical dope. so we've got a little yeah so that's just like a bit of yeah yeah it's a really great musical it like it was really really great so that's like one part of like a sentimental gift. Mm -hmm. And then another one, this is hilarious. Um, this is actually my merch. So this is my girl like me tea. Okay. And I, it's funny because I didn't actually design this whatsoever. My partner, my boyfriend surprised me um, one day when I was coming home and he had all of these t-shirts lined up of this design because it's actually like a, like an animate, not animated. I don't even know really how to like describe it. But I mentioned to him yeah. I wanted to do t-shirts for my first single girl like me. And he was like, no, don't do it. Don't waste your money. No one's going to buy t-shirts. I was like, but it's my first single and yeah. I really want to do it. Like you only have that first single, yeah. like your de debut single. You only have that feeling once, like mm -hmm. ever. 
And I just kind of wanted to have like something with it that would always, you know, remind me or like, mm. you know, just something to have. Um, and then he like fully convinced me that no one would want to buy my merch because the whole time he was surprising me yep. um, and making these t-shirts. Yep. So that's just like another little like classic. kind of, yeah. Classic. Yeah, classic I love that. That's, that's so, an yeah. OG boyfriend move. It's definitely I something know, I'd do I with know. my partner. <laughs> be yeah, like, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was super sweet. So that's kind of the only thing I've like thought of like sentimental, no, if that makes I, sense. Yeah. No. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, back to the first one, the the, the Ellen one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, I totally understand that. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, I'm not sure when it was, but still. Um. Uh. Yeah. I, I get that. Uh. Because my grandma passed away not not too long ago as well, and yeah. the room that I'm actually currently uh in right now, or the the apartment, I guess. Um, that is where she used to live when she was before she went to the home, and that like this picture. I'm South African, and this is like a custom like drawing that she had that was on her oh. wall and then she took to her home and then i really wanted it um after she passed so yeah i'm so sorry but that's such a beautiful story yeah so i guess that's it's my- just those little yeah it's those yeah, little yeah. things that's like and just it means it, yeah the meaning so much more rather than just a picture on the wall mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's like something you know i saw when i was a kid i was like yeah i remember this this drawing yeah and, yeah yeah so no yeah. i I, t- I totally um get the the definitely the sentimentality of that and you know it's amazing that you know you got to experience that and that um share that memory with her yeah Yeah. of course of course yeah and in regards to the the shirt thing that's that's just funny (laughs) it's funny it's really funny like i said it's just classic classic (laughs) full-on full-on convinced me that no one's going to want to buy t-shirts from me because i'm a nobody and i was like oh okay the gaslighting (laughs) is like (laughs) Seriously. And then he had like all these racks like set up in this room. Um, and he was home like here. I was like, what are you doing? Like, and he was like full on like trying to tell me to come upstairs. And he he was playing my song like on my laptop, somehow like logged into my laptop and was like playing Girl Like Me and was like, Yeah, it was it was really, it was really sweet. And I was That's like, great. I'm taking that design and I'm selling them and making t-shirts. So <laughs> No, for sure, for sure. Um yeah. having a partner that's, you know, that supportive is, you know, always great. so nice as like a not just a not just a musician, but like just, you know, a creative in general, like no matter what creative yeah. field you're in, because yeah. it's like oh, you're not just looking at me and like, oh, you know, you're just doing music or you're doing whatever. And it's like, uh, you know, yes. do, your, do your little your little thing. It's like, oh, no, I can see you truly care about this thing. Yeah. And I want to back yeah. you no matter what. Yeah, 100. So. And and he's been, he's been, you know, through every high and every low. Before I, you know, before I started releasing my own music, he saw me doing, you know, pub gigs and stuff. And mm. like, he's just been with me through this entire journey. He's really incredible. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. He's Ooh. a real one. <laughs> shout out to your man. Shout out to your man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, number three. What's the first most important piece of equipment that you ever bought or received? Oh, I should have done a received one, but it's totally fine. But I think we all know what this is going to be. <laughs> Yep. The microphone. Good old microphone. Classic. So this is my, the one that I first bought. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually do have my very first mic somewhere in this room. Mm-hmm. Again, it's a Sennheiser, but it was, it's, it was just way too old in the end that I had to upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, this has been my bestie for plenty <laughs> of years. And now I have upgraded to, I don't know if it's much of an upgrade, but I've now <laughs> got, a, got a myself a oh, nice. wireless a wireless one so for my shows now i love wireless mics i hate being wired i can't stand being yes. wired i need to do my thing and i can't like do my thing if i'm like getting caught up in mm-hmm. you know um so this is my my next my upgrade and also for like hygiene reasons like so many musicians are like singers will be sick and then we will share the same mic and it's just like oh yeah. so if, if i just bring my own mic for, like my own goes it's just a whole lot easier yeah. and yeah, so that's probably my trusty purchase. That ah, dope. Yeah, yeah, um, my first piece of equipment, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more after that of microphones. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, seeing as you brought it up, has there been a, a a situation on on stage where with a wired mic where you got caught up and it's like, yeah, what the what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, I just I can't I just can't do it. I like to do my thing, and then I find like I'm just like twirling and just getting caught and then like you're stepping over and you like have to move it like it's just oh it's just 
It's just frustrating. I just yeah. don't like it. I'm not no, for I it. Agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> if I was just on like, if it was on like just a mic stand and I just was performing like that, then like no worries. But like I move. <laughs> I yeah. do a fair bit on stage. So it's just like not ideal to be wide. No, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I'm, you know, if, if, ask anyone who, who's seen me perform I, I jump all over the place and you know if i could yeah. jump in the crowd and run up down right back on the stage and back flips and back, yeah, yeah we'll do it all 100 yeah. percent. and yeah, yeah the the wide mic definitely <laughs> definitely impedes that and you know yeah everyone should have a wireless mic that's sh- that should be something yeah. the government hands out to all, <laughs> all artists exactly invest investment in twice we only <laughs> you'll get a wireless mic you'll get a wireless mic <laughs> <laughs> No, for sure. For sure. But that's cool. All right. Um, number four, what's an object from or that represents one of your favorite gigs or sessions? I think we know what this is going to be. Mm. I told you there's going to be heaps of t-shirts. Oof. So Here we go. <laughs> so my very first festival, Groove in the Moon. Fire. So I'm doing a thing where I'm like collecting all t-shirts from all mm-hmm. my festivals that I've done. And of course, we know what this one's going to be. Mm-hmm. So listen, listen in, listen out. Yep. Fire. Dope, dope, yeah. dope. My name's not on either of them, but one day there will be. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. Manifest. Manifest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so. How was how was the experience of both of those? Um, yeah. Start with, oh Groo- start with Groovin, I guess, seeing as with the first. Incredible. So Groovin, it was, it was on a smaller stage. It wasn't mm-hmm. like the bigger stage, but it was still the most incredible experience that, it, it was such a great first festival. Mm. Like the 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 backstage crew were like amazing. Mm. Everyone was so like helpful and just so friendly. Like I like huge huge credits to to the whole group of the Moo mm. team. They they literally just all beautiful people. The the festival. Well, again, I don't know what goes on with like mm. logistics side of things, but I felt like everything kind of ran smoothly. Like it was it was such a great first experience because I, I didn't know my artist pass could get me like mm. anywhere within the festival so yeah. when there was someone who had done um festivals who I was hanging out with um another DJ that was also on the stage that I was on um and she was like oh I'm gonna go side stage I was like you can't do that and she goes like no you, you really can I was like what <laughs> so, yeah, and then as soon as I figured that out I was like side stage for like nearly every performance I wanted to see. I was meeting all the artists that I wanted to meet. Mm-hmm. It was just like a wild experience having like, you're in the same room as like all these huge yeah. artists like yeah. that you like see on your phone and screen. And it's just like, it was a really just weird mm, feeling surreal. being on the other yeah. side. Yeah. It's so surreal. So mm. surreal. Um, yeah. The, the, the whole thing that was, that was really like awesome and a good a great insight to see like how festivals also kind of run mm. and like um information that they need um yeah just like contacts and like who who's your direct point of contact and whatnot like yeah just it was, it was very insightful to see like how things like run sure. um and then yeah listening was just like a whole other a whole other level of mm-hmm. just like craziness it was so that was my my first like big big Mm. big stage big boy stage um (laughs) and it was just it just felt like home it was it was the the wildest feeling ever and I wasn't expecting that many people at all Mm -hmm. like at all because I'm obviously being like one of the first like the first act on like not like no one really rocks up yeah that early um I had the benefit though that listening started later so yeah a lot of people did rock up yeah a lot of people did rock up like pretty much from start mm-hmm. so i didn't know i was actually expecting probably like a handful like 30 people or something yeah. just like a few people that would get you know um and it wasn't until i went side stage that i saw the amount of people and that was the first time like i was like holy sh- can I swear on this? Yes, Probably you not. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, have I? I'm sorry. I can't, people I always can't ask that. It's myself. so funny. That just a side note. People always ask, like midway through the interview, wait, can I swear? And they've been swearing the whole and time. I'm, always, I'm so sorry. No, you don't. Totally yes, it's, it's a bad. It's a very bad habit. So I'm like, oh wait, can I swear? No, you're I'm fine. so sorry. Um, because like the lead up to listening, I was just so ready. Like mm-hmm. I, I felt so ready. Um. And it's it's so weird because low key I've been manifesting that since like last year. Like mm. I or I already knew and I already told myself I'm performing. So yeah. 
I was like, I was waiting for the phone call. As weird as that sounds, like I yep. really just knew that I was going to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the whole lead up, the whole like, you know, rehearsing and whatever, I wasn't nervous one bit. Whereas mm-hmm. grooving, I was nervous. Yeah. Um, I just felt so ready. Um, the day of, I was just so excited, like mm-hmm. not nervous. I didn't get nervous until I was like side stage and I saw the amount of people and I was like, yeah, like shit, this is like, <laughs> this is real shit. Like this is go yeah. time. Um, and then my, then like I just hearing and feeling like the the first song of mine and like the intro, mm-hmm. cause I've always just like dreamt of that moment, like feeling what it feels like on that big stage mm-hmm. and then to actually live it. It was like, this is just like, it was a, an out of body experience. It was wild. And then my dancers got on and the crowd was screaming and I was like, why are people screaming? Like, you don't know who I am. And then I got on and they were screaming some more. I was like, do they think I'm someone else? Like, yeah. <laughs> they were just, they were going crazy. They were giving me so much energy. There was like a couple of thousand people there. It was wow. just like, like, it was, yeah, I couldn't have asked for a, for a better experience. It was really just everything I've ever dreamt of. That's fire. That's that's really, really cool. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's something yeah. that, you know, every performer, you know, would dream. Dreams of, of yeah. That, you know, first reception. Feeling. Like, yeah. Feeling. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Is yeah. there a is there a local artist that you met at either of those festivals that you're like, oh my goodness, it was, it was great to meet you? And is there an international artist that you met that you're like, oh my goodness? Um, there actually wasn't any other local artists in mm. in Listen In, I don't believe. They were okay. all international. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really wanted to meet Ice, but I mm. didn't. Of course. Um, but I pretty, yeah. I pretty much met everyone else and everyone else is super, super friendly. Mm-hmm. Like Piri is so sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I got like went up to Skrillex. I was like, this is mad. Like <laughs> what is happening? I was hanging with Friction and his team for like nearly the whole day. Like mm-hmm. it was just wild to just be amongst like, oh, did you see the whole Mark's like scenario of what happened in Adelaide? Mm-hmm. Of like, oh my God, it's terrible. So he pretty much got booed off stage in Adelaide. It was, oh, wow. yeah, so, yeah, it was, I don't think people understood his set because he makes all of his music on the spot. Right. Um, oh, my, yeah. Rebier. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did you see, did you see what happened? No, I didn't see that, no. but I know his, I know that he does that. He's wow. dope. He's so great. And I spoke to him before he went on. Um, And then I was like, backstage for his first half of his set and we just heard all of this commotion and all this screaming um and like you just hear all these like people on the mic like get off the stage like yelling like screaming stupid shit and we're like from backstage we're like what the hell is going on so we like went side stage and we saw like mark was down in the audience like handing all like these kids the mic and they're like just screaming whatever because apparently they were all like get off and like booing because they just didn't understand his set and ice spice was directly after him Uh, so i think the mentality was if we get him off she'll come on sooner but it's not that's not the case because festival has schedule exactly so he kind of he kind of instigated it a little bit because he was like ice spice canceled this like Cancel Australia, everyone, because Adelaide was first. Like, I think he just yeah. kind of, like, ruffled some feathers. Mm-hmm. Um, but then on the end, like, at the end, he was, like, he made a beat saying, like, we want Ice Spice. And it was just, he had to get off stage, though, because people just kept throwing bottles and, like, oh, wow. water. And, like, it was, like, wetting his equipment. So, like, yeah, they pretty much were, like, dude, you have to, like, get off now. Yeah. I felt terrible. I went up That's to Mark and I was, like, I'm so sorry on behalf of everyone in Adelaide. I was, like, I loved your set. <laughs> it was it was wild i felt terrible there's like all videos on like tiktok and twitter yeah. and whatnot it's pretty embarrassing like it it's very embarrassing actually yeah. very embarrassing and i think he like paid out australia throughout the rest of, oh sorry he paid out adelaide throughout the rest of the the australian tour i'm pretty sure he did this song like fuck adelaide or like something like that but hey actually we deserved it if we treated him like that then you know yeah, it's so important. sad that is very unfortunate <laughs> hate to be yeah. booed off stage it's yeah. horrible definitely definitely and you know as someone is mm-hmm. who's so creative in the scene like so in a, like the in, internet like yes. the, in global everywhere yeah yeah like, like no one like no one can do what he does no. he's probably like the most talented person there like he's yeah. making everything on the spot and they just yeah. booed him off i was like damn guys you just yeah. didn't get it <laughs> like it's very sad That's yeah very oh well 
aside from that, I'm I'm glad that the the rest of the experience for you. That was a very long speech. I'm so yeah. sorry. No, but that's yeah, right. It was wild. It was wild. Yeah. In short, it was insane. No, yeah. That, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and uh, number five, what is something that represents your dreams, aspirations within your field? I'm gonna bring out these babies. Fire. They're my artist passes. Mm-hmm. So I'm manifesting many of these. Mm. Nice, nice. Having like nice. a wall, having a wall of like artist passes will be like fire. <laughs> you should get um, you should get next next time you go to a, a thing because I'm I'm a sports fan and you know I love mm-hmm. memorabilia and stuff like that. You should get mm-hmm. two shirts, one that you can wear and one that you can get people to sign, and then you frame it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that from now on. That's yeah. And then you put like a plaque on the bottom. This uh performed this date. That's yeah. what I'm trying to figure out, like, what I'm trying to do from, like, now to, like, mm-hmm. when I get to do, like, all the bigger festivals. Like, what is my thing that I'm going to collect from, like, every festival? Yeah. So that's why I started the tease. I'm mm-hmm. obviously going to keep hold of my artist passes, but I'm like, what else can I, like, keep yeah. memorabilia? Yeah. No, yeah, collect, that's insane. Are dope. But, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, I think that could be cool. Um, Is there a a gig that's, like, the dream the dream event to perform at? Mm. Local I mean, are we talking? Okay, local? Well, you know what? My dream was to do Listen Out, and I did it. Okay. What's so that's wild. Next? But hey, but I would love to do. I would love to tour. Like do do the full tour mm-hmm. of Listen Out. Um, like oh my God, like any festival experience. Oh my God, sold out. How did I not think of that? Sold mm-hmm. out. Okay. Have the most wild lineup right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going on tour. That would be a dream. Mm-hmm. Um, but like international, oh my God, like Coachella. Like, yep. I think that, I think everyone's going to say that, let's be yeah, honest. But pretty much. <laughs> they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they have the wildest festivals over there. But mm. yeah, it's, it's wild because Listen Out was one I was like, I, that, that was my, my dream. Like, mm. I have to get that. Yeah. So the, the next, the next one is to do the full tour of Listen Out. That would be wild. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Dope. Dope. Yeah. Um. You know, like I said, man- manifesting a little, some more Manifest. budgets. Yeah, manifesting. Definitely, 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 definitely. <laughs> For sure. Um, all right. All yeah. right. Um. Couple more questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, what is a personal moment that stands out to you that has impacted your music in a certain way? Um. Look, my my next single is called Boys Club, and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna say that. Okay. Yeah. If you kind of get the the hint, mm-hmm. just just like the whole like men in the industry and not even just in the industry, like I've, yeah, even in in my personal life, with yeah, yeah, I'm just we're all about female empowerment, and that's what the EP's like coming. My yeah. EP that's coming is all about female empowerment. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I think that's really shaped myself and my music. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna ask. A moment because you know i think that's you know seeing as you were hesitant to, you know, i can tell you i can tell you general, off record but, but it's, it's yeah. yeah no no no, definitely definitely sure. i don't want to be tmz um uh, <laughs> um but yeah i i totally get that and i'm i'm here mm. for a record like that as a male in the industry um because yeah as much as 2023 is still a time where you know things have progressed there's a lot of progression in things there is also a lot of not non-progression mm. and it's, it's and don't like, get me wrong i work yeah. with some incredible guys like yeah. i'm you know i'm not saying no, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not and you know it, but yeah it's one of those like you know if if you feel offended then it's for you but if you don't yeah. and you know who you are like and you're on you're good it's like cool yeah just yeah you, you, yeah. you enjoy this exactly yeah yeah okay. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So that was very like <laughs> I was teasing you a lot with, <laughs> with that answer. So I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. Like you said, it, it, you you share what you you feel you need to share, yeah. and you know I'm not gonna force anything out of you. Um, that's okay, unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much for for coming on. Um, thank you. It's been a pleasure to to chop it up with you. Um, here is where I kind of. You know, you can let the people know what's coming up, you know, what is out. Yeah. What's, what's For sure. So we just released Bounce. Yep. If you listen to Bounce, um, it is a banger. It has to get you moving. If it doesn't, then, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Bounce is out. Go stream Bounce. It is, yeah, super fun, 
super flirty, super sexy, just like all, it's just all about the good vibes. It's fun. It's a mm-hmm. very fun song. Coming up next month mm-hmm. is my next release. Um, It was called Boys Club. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to share that one. So we're in EP mode at the moment. We're rolling out the songs for my EP, which will be out next year. And then, yeah, we've got it. it, Yeah, stay tuned. We've got another two before the whole EP is released. Dope. Dope. Well, stay tuned tuned for that, like I just said. Um, Where can the people find you at? Everywhere. (laughs) Natasha Bianca. On socials, streaming platforms, Natasha Bianca across all platforms. Fire. Fire. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on. I Thank have been you. Ru, aka the Culture Black Kid. This is Rue's room, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> See ya.